Hi guys, welcome to the One Zen Fitness Podcast with me, Kieran Cronin. Hope this finds you well. Um, so in order to keep this podcast running, um, it's important that we bring in at least some money. Because obviously, uh, if this does cost money, I don't necessarily have any uh, sponsorship and, and so on. Um, so the podcast is brought to you in some other ways. So, uh, for instance, we have a, a patrons program, um, which you can donate X amount per month. Um, which sounds like you're giving money away for nothing, but actually you're, you're allowing the continuation of this awesome service. So if you went to HTTPS, the little double dots, forward slash, forward slash, patron, P-A-T-R-O-N, dot podbean p-o-d-b-e-a-n so patron.podbean.com forward slash one zen fitness and you'll be greeted with this home page and on this home page there's different categories of donation so it is per month but obviously you can cancel any time so two dollars because it's an american website um two dollars per month allows the continuation of the service and you get our eternal thanks and we love you. $20 gets you a mention on our podcast. Um, and we also send you a bit of merchandise, uh, a bit of merch, or maybe a mug, maybe a, a water bottle, something like that, which is pretty awesome. It'll have our branding and stuff on there and you get a mention. Awesome. For $50 a month, uh, you get a mention, you get a t-shirt. Awesome. I don't even have a t-shirt. Um, and you get access to our private group. <clears throat> and our private group is just a group of like-minded people um, where we can discuss the ins and outs of whatever you like, really, uh, for $90 a month. $90. It sounds like a lot, but I promise you're going to get a bargain. You get a personal thank you video from me. Awesome. That's worth $90 on its own, surely. Um, you get a 60 second sponsorship on the show about any product or service that you might have. Uh, and that gives you access to quite a few people in order to get your product, uh, out there. As well as that, if that wasn't enough, you get a one hour Zoom call or up to one hour, depends, you know, it will take an hour, uh, Zoom call, a, a consultation and you get a, a fitness program as a result of that. And you get a t-shirt. That's pretty awesome, I reckon. Oh, and you get access to the private group, obviously. Um, and that's just $90. Obviously, $90 a month, but if you just wanted to cut it off there, then yeah, you can do. But those are the different options that you're greeted with. Please share that with your with your friends. Even if you just donate the $2 a month, I promise you it makes such a difference in terms of the setting up and running costs of this program. Okay. So that's the Patreon program. Get on it, please. Uh, we also um, have other things going on. So uh, I distribute these awesome organic fair trade uh, nutritional products. Um, I wouldn't distribute them if I didn't believe in them. I've tried them myself. They're pretty awesome, to be fair. Uh, better than most of the nonsense out there. I promise you that. And just like that, you kind of get what you pay for. Uh, so they are a premium product, which I love. Um, and I definitely, I, I'm not made of money, but I definitely pay the top dollar if it's worth it. And these products definitely are. They're called Platinum. In the in the USA, it's called Purium. Uh, but uh, if you went to Platinum Europe, so Platinum Europe, all one word, dot biz, forward slash one zen, um, and look at some of the products on there. They're all organic, fair trade, green powders. There's things like crack cell, chlorella, uh, tons of naturally occurring vitamins and, and minerals. Um, game changer to, to, to your health, your vitality. Um, the Hippocrates powder is just basically full of the most nutritionally dense uh, substances all in one powder. I would go for the Hippocrates uh, berry flavor. Um, it's so Moorish, you can't stop drinking it. It's phenomenal. Um, I, I'm a big fan of that one. Um, and I would get that on a regular basis. It's awesome. And then you've got the L-O-V-E, the love protein drink. 
again, another really Moorish drink. And the beauty is, whether you're a meat eater or a vegan, these are uh, vegan-based products. So there's no animal produce in there. It's all plant-based. But even if you're a meat eater, don't let that put you off. They're so nutritionally dense. Uh, for the protein powders, they have a full spectrum of amino acids and the, the full peptides within there from multiple sources. Uh, so don't don't think, oh, yeah, there's not enough you know, red meat in there. There's not enough chicken. You don't need that in your in, with regards to these these uh, drinks. They're very nutritionally dense. Uh, I went on the ten day gut cleanse. I felt my 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 gut, my my microbiome needed uh, a boost, needed a kick. And I felt I needed it mentally and physically. I needed to take that kind of break away from the, the, the shit that's out there. Even if you don't purposely eat it, it's, it's still there, right? I needed a break from that. So I went on this 10-day gut cleanse. Uh, and as a, as a side effect, uh, I didn't have any bloating. Uh, I felt, I just felt, I felt invigorated, which was quite weird because it's really low calorie. Um, and because it's low calorie, obviously I lost a, a bunch of, uh, weight with that. And amazingly, it was mainly body fat because I was, I was checking it. I've got the, the tech around me to check it. Uh, and there's pictures I put on Instagram and I was so amazed that I just thought, fuck it. I'm going to, I'm going to distribute these, uh, because they're, they're, they're the real deal. Uh, and I can give you 50 euros off, 50 euros off. So if you went to platinum Europe dot biz forward slash one zen, and on the checkout, if you typed in the code one Zen, uh, I'll give you 50 euros off. How awesome is that? Check it out. Um, we also have, um, our own online course, how to be your own fitness trainer, uh, which gives you everything you need to know in order to be able to, to be able to write successfully your own programs, but make them progressive. And that sounds, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can just buy a men's fitness magazine and just get a, a workout out of there. But wouldn't it be awesome if you could truly write and understand why you're writing your own personalized program, you know, including how to do the exercises properly, not, you know, not the myths that are out there, but actually the, the, the more technical way of doing it. Wouldn't you like to know how to mobilize your joints successfully without any equipment? Wouldn't you like to be able to write your own nutritional program based on actual information rather than, you know, things like bro science? Wouldn't you be able to enhance your recovery from tried and tested methods? Um, which is, we put all that in there, all that together, you get lifetime access. Um, so if you went to uh, www.onezen, the number four all, so that's one zen four all, dot think ific, so that's think, T-H-I-N-K, ific, I-F-I-C, so thinkific.com. So that's one zen four all dot thinkific.com. The first lesson is free, so you can kind of jump, you can kind of sign up, but you can jump on that first lesson for free. And if you like it, you can pay. If you don't like it, you can go. It's as simple as that. There's, there's no, you're not financially tied to it at all. Um, it costs $140 US dollars, which is about 107 ish, uh, uh, British pounds. Uh, but you get lifetime access and you get a, a lot of material for that. Um, and you can email me at any time. I put my personal email on that course. Uh, so you can email me with any questions you like anytime. How awesome is that? You get a, a access to me as well. Um, da -da -da -da. <laughs> blow my own trumpet. <laughs> um, that's not all. That really isn't all. Um, we also have our actual personal trainer course. 80% of it is online. Uh, the rest of it is in the UK. Um, but if you're living anywhere in the UK, it's only once, it only works out one Saturday per month that you have to come down to sunny Milton Keynes, which is about 60 miles north of London. Fantastic transport links, just saying. Um, and currently, uh, we have a special deal on where you get the whole diploma course fully accredited by the YMCA for just £999. Obviously, if you're listening to this, uh, maybe in a year or so, it's probably not going to be at that price. But for, for the, for the rest of this year, because we started this on a Black Friday, Cyber Monday type thing sale, 
uh, I'm going to carry it on for the for the rest of the year. Um, so even if uh, the course has started, you can still jump on and catch up quite easily. It's just how I uh, sort it out. But if you go to our website, onezenacademy.com, um, and you'll see on there that the discount's already uh, applied. <clears throat> you click on checkout and boom, I'll be notified. I'll get in contact with you and we'll start the ball rolling. Um, and that's it. That's it from me. I know you're pretty sick of listening to me. So uh, here's the latest episode. Enjoy. Hi, guys. Welcome to the One Zen Fitness Academy podcast with me, your host, Kieran Cronin. Join me as we discuss everything health, wellness, fitness, rehabilitation, sport and lifestyle and anything else that we can get our hands on. If you rate this podcast, please share amongst your friends, family, lovers, mistresses, and anyone else. Please spread the wealth of health today. Welcome, welcome, guys. Um, I think first things first. If I can get uh, you to introduce yourself, maybe a bit about your your background and kind of who you are, what you what you do. Go for Ladies it. first. Okay. <laughs> okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is um, it's Chiara and uh, I'm uh, Italian, probably you could hear from my accent, <laughs> uh, and uh, who I am and what I'm doing. So I have a background in art history, so everything for me as my degree let's say started from there and then slowly slowly I started uh, discovering more about spiritual practices especially when I was studying in university because I was quite stressed with exams and everything and um, I needed something to you know relax myself and my mom uh, is a yoga teacher and also she's an Ayurvedic therapist so she started telling me, oh, maybe you should start practice uh, yoga. And uh, that started in 2006 and 2005, maybe. And uh, then after my degree, I moved to Ireland and uh, I started actually my spiritual journey there. Uh, I found Ireland uh, an amazing land and a spiritual land. And uh, I met a lot of different yoga teacher, other spiritual uh, practices, uh, uh, dance, uh, meditation, and whatever. And uh, and then I started traveling in Thailand for five months, and uh, I did my first ever training in spirituality, or what you would call like holistic therapy, in, uh, in Chiang Mai, and I started studying Thai massage which was uh, quite a spiritual, um, the whole experience was uh, very much connected with yoga and meditation and chanting, and it was a very beautiful experience. Then I did uh, a lot of different <laughs> um, trainings uh, till I went in India uh, in 2014 and I became a yoga teacher. Nice. And uh, from there, I started teaching. Then I met Peter while I was teaching my first yoga ever yoga class in India. I met Peter. <laughs> That's how we met. And uh, he was uh, my student. And, uh, and then from there, I, I, after giving birth of my daughter, I discovered womb yoga and anything related with uh, women therapy. Yeah. And so I started diving into the feminine power and the feminine uh, uh, Shakti uh, awakening, let's call it. And um, and now I'm a menstrual psychotherapy and I follow women with every, you know, difficulties that they have correlated to their menstrual cycle, fertility, pregnancy, and so on. Nice. So I think I said... Uh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and, and Pete, what about yourself? So, uh, as Kara was saying, um, yeah, she kind of introduced me to yoga and actually the whole spiritual world, as it were. So before before I went to India to do my first yoga lesson, I was uh, I spent a year in Australia, basically just getting boozed up, um, <laughs> uh, trying to find myself in that way. Um, and then I got to India, and everything just kind of took a, like a one eighty flip, you know, and. Uh, 
Kiara showed me into yoga. I suffered a lot from um, sciatica in my back and yeah. uh, I, I had very, very limited movement in my body really mm. for someone of 20, 24, 25 years old. Um, and then from there, yeah, I carried on my, my yoga journey. I did training in yoga nidra, which is um, a type of relaxation, meditation, lying down. And the beautiful part is, is whoever does yoga nidra doesn't need to do anything. They just lie down and the work all comes from the, the practitioner. Uh, and also while we were in India, we did uh, level Reiki 1 and 2. Uh, and then I came back to England and did my Reiki Masters. So I've become a Reiki Master. Um, I've done lots of courses of meditation as well. And and this, it was this year, it seems a long time ago with the whole coronavirus in between. But this is the beginning of this year. Uh, we were in India and I, I did my yoga teacher training in vinyasa and hatha yoga. So I'm a qualified yoga teacher as well. Um, and that's that's really it for me, yeah. So oh. I haven't any teaching of yoga or anything as yet, but uh, this year has actually really helped me just to strengthen my own practice yeah. in both yoga and meditations. It's right. been a blessing in that way. Um, right. Yeah. So, I mean, and also, yeah, I used to run men's groups as well. So, that was another thing that we used to do. And I uh, believe, you know, Kieran used to come yeah. to the men's yeah, groups. Uh, I was going to bring that uh, up. In, I was going to bring that up. So, I mean, because uh, I, I found it quite, found it quite nice and unique that you, you, you almost kind of, you really embody that kind of feminine and masculine as a, as a couple. Um, and, <laughs> uh, I, I guess, uh, I guess my first real question is, is, is that by chance? Was that kind of just, it just felt right? Was that part of a plan because obviously I, I mean I went to the the man circle uh, <laughs> and I really I really enjoyed you know I really enjoyed that when, when I had time to, to go that was you know I really enjoyed kind of embracing that manliness and I, I know that there's there's like uh, the man clan for instance in the states uh, mm-hmm. with, with Casey that's growing and there's there's all these different circles and there's women's circles do you think there's a why do you think they're growing in popularity and obviously you know was it by chance that you mm. started these groups so I think like for the to the beginning Kiara kind of fitted in with how she had, had the women's groups and everything else when we got back from India it kind of just happened that way and uh, I'll be honest I used to go to them at the end because uh, I need you know to find a bit of spiritual connection yeah and then I got to a point where I thought do you know what this there needs to be this for men as well because men I think it, especially <laughs> in the past few years have gone through a big spiritual change and a spiritual yeah. evolution and for them there was a part missing, especially me. I was like, I need something for the men. And that's when uh, I, myself and uh, David, the guy that we set the men's group up with, yeah. we, we had the same feeling. And we realized very soon after we did the first men's group, there was a lot of men who were, who were needing this. So I think for that, we just kind of fell into that sense where, you know, Kiara had her women's circles and, and still has now. And, and then there was just that need for the men as well. So it just naturally happened that way. I think. I think also since we met, this balance between feminine and masculine just happened for us. Yeah. Because uh, in a way, before meeting Peter, before knowing Peter, I was uh, just a, a yogic in a way. So yeah. I was just practicing yoga, actually quite a... Um, a dynamic type of yoga and uh, since we met and since um, we had viola we we had viola in a very uh, different way let's say yeah. uh, so she was in uh, she was in uh, what's the word um, uh, well she came unexpectedly while we were traveling in Rishikesh yeah. uh, and um, and so i felt the need since i was pregnant to be surrounded by women and although I've done before in my life, I've done my women's circle, <clears throat> I felt I really needed to also to share these, uh, these feelings with other women. And uh, I found also because I'm quite, even though I'm a, a woman, I'm quite masculine, more masculine energy. Yeah. And Peter is actually more connected with his feminine energy, mm. sometimes even more than me. Mm-hmm. The one that cries, it's, it's me. It's him. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and I found with also with the creation of Viola, in a way, this whole 
things really uh, started. So the feminine and the masculine work between the two of us and then sharing also this with the, with others. But it came from a need, like a, a need of connecting and uh, sharing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I, I kind of see that in, you know, a lot of different industries as well. There's... Uh, there, there's this real need, like, um, I'll give you an example. I realized the other day that I probably spent two thirds of my life in a, in a gym. Um, not necessarily because it's, uh, you know, a place where you go and work out. It's, it, it's almost just like that, that kind of that tribe. It's a place that you mm-hmm. go where there's like-minded people. And when, and this last lockdown that's happened in the UK, when that gym was taken away, I do feel uh, especially with mental health, it, it suffers dramatically because you're, you're taken out of that that tribe mentality. And I think sure. the amount of disconnect in the in the world right now, I think what you may find is people kind of drive into these these circles a, a, a lot more, like you said, because there's that that need. And mm-hmm. I think the need will just keep growing and growing. Um, you know, a lot of guys, especially, don't know how to be a a positive masculine role model, a positive masculine person. You know, it's just man, woman, and it's very superficial. Uh, yeah. Is there anything that you kind of, when you go into, say, for instance, the the, the woman's circle, for instance, is there anything that you that you you um, try and get across to other women? Like, let me reword that. What are the characteristics of the feminine energy and what are the characteristics of the masculine energy that we're trying to promote? So uh, for, I think for the women's circle, there, there is a real need to, for women mm. to share what's yeah. happening uh, inside of us. Yeah. And because, so I'm talking first physically and then I'll speak about the energy because yeah. uh, I think it's all interlinked. And many women come to me and uh, go to women's circle because they actually have a physical problem. Mm. which is uh, sometimes uh, menstruation, uh, pa- painful menstruation, PMS, PMDD, and uh, a lot of different symptoms that they are kind of uh, defined as um, hormonal imbalancing, okay? And uh, we don't know how, uh, many women don't know how to deal with them. And uh, they just think that they're getting crazy or, you know, all of these, uh, uh, these kind of things, and there's something wrong with them. Yeah. The problem is, uh, the core of the problem is that we don't know who yeah. we are as women because we always been found, uh, you know, we always been told that what we have as, uh, you know, the menstrual bleed, the cycle and uh, our womb uh, is something that we need to hide. We need to feel ashamed of. Mm. And so there is a real need to rediscover as a woman who we really are. Mm. And uh, we can do this just sharing together what we are going through. And I found in the last five years that I've been sharing this work that just even talking about how we feel and uh, actually it's all normal that we feel in these different ways every week because we're four different women in in a month because uh, our cycle, we are cyclical beings and nobody told us this, okay? So that's the need, that's the physical need for a woman to gather together. And then the, the feminine energies that we are discovering through this work is that we are emotional. We are emotional beings. Like uh, the feminine energy, also called Shakti energies in Sanskrit, is about creativity, is about emotion, is about connecting with the earth. Also, it's very important, the connection with the earth is about fluidity, is about connecting with the elements. It's about uh, letting ourselves go with instinct, instinctuality, which we don't, we don't have in this society. And, um, and also we try to find a balance with these energies because there might be a bit too much imbalance in feminine energy so the woman can really think straight. So that's how it comes, the masculine energy. It comes to embody this 
uh, alignment. So let's say the feminine energies are very wavy and they go everywhere. And then they come the masculine energy to actually bring the alignments back. Yeah. And what, the, what we are teaching both of us the, in the men's circle and then the women's circle to bring balance in these both energies because mm. women might have too much unbalancing in the feminine energies and men they might have an imbalance in the masculine energies mm. and that's where it comes Peter because I found that he embodies this very masculine and feminine energy at the same time that he can actually share and put in contact the men let's say with their emotions mm. And I think that's really important. And um, and like you were saying earlier, Kieran, was like the, the the separation that we have at the minute between people, and like we need to come together and and talk about this. And actually, when you're in a group, be it a women's group or a men's group, you find that a lot of men or women are going through the same thing as you. Yeah. So you think you think you're all alone, and especially men, we could be very much in our heads where we're kind of logically thinking about things and how they work and everything else like that. And then actually, when you when you're in a group of you know 10, 15 men, and you sit there and go, oh, I've got this problem, and then you'll see a lot of heads going like this, you know, they're shaking, and you go, Oh no, not in the head, sorry. And then you realise that you're not alone. And I think this is a wonderful thing when the the, the men's circles and the women's circles and We've also done like unity circles where you bring the men and the women together. And that, that takes it to another level again. You know, you kind of both of the female and male energies coming together like that is, mm. is amazing. It really is. Actually, there is a lot of work to do in unity because mm. we found that actually for women now, it's very uh, easy to share with other women. But then when it comes the masculine, the male into the um uh, into the, in the into the equation. You, equation mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, they the energy shift again. So we need to actually bring balance and heal that mm-hmm. division as yeah. well. Yeah, it's um, it, it's funny. I used to um, run these uh, type two diabetes prevention groups, and they're a mixture of people. But there was this one group, and he, by chance only the guys turned up and there was like five women on the list. They just happened not to turn up that day. And the conversation, and bear in mind, I spend a year with these people. The conversation that that shifts is amazing. And when you ask, and these are all older guys, these are you know, 50, 60, 70, some are in their 80s. Um, the conversation shifts. And when you ask them why they're able to talk so openly now, it's not because women aren't present it's because there's no fear of judgment Mm. and it's that it's that judgment and i I know this you know firsthand as a a guy i guess you you know you're you're judged all your all your life and uh, i was watching i'm a big fan of stand-up comedy and there was this comedian i was watching the other day who who kind of started hitting the nail on the head in a superficial way but it kind of you kind of it gets the point across where he was saying when when a woman meets a, a man the, the 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 male friends to the guy always ask what does she look like mm-hmm. whereas when when the w- woman's friends meet the woman they're always like what does he do Mm. so it, it's they're not interested in what he looks like they're only interested in what he provides yeah what does he bring does he make you better does he give you security does he give you all these things and I think with males if they don't know who they are as a as a as a person or where they fit into the world then this kind of judgment kind of then goes through the roof or perceived judgment goes goes through the, the roof. exactly yeah i think it I is think that's why the, judgment isn't it so. yeah and i think that's why kind of the the circles you know work really well and this was my experience you know going to your circle uh pete that i felt i could say stuff um and bear in mind that that every part of my being was saying do not share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because of that judgment. And I can yeah. say now it was it was like the first time I stood up to do a presentation in front of a whole bunch of people. Okay. It, you know, I was nervous, I was sweating. 
Um, and every, yeah, like I said, every part of my being did not want to share to the point where it, it kind of, I could, it hurt my bones, you know, that's mm. to describe it. But as soon as you do, and as soon as it happens, as soon as it kind of goes out there, like <laughs> into that circle, and you realize actually <laughs> it ain't so bad, and everyone seems to be, you know, on the same wavelength, and everyone seems to have the same problems as me. There's this almost like the clouds part, and the weight is lifted, and it's a mix of oh, release. Absolutely, yeah. And that that's what I really like about you know the 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 circles, and I think yeah, there's a there's a lot to benefit. And I've it's a great medicine behind sharing. Yeah, there is because since when I started as well, for me it was really difficult to share, and then it was like almost ten years ago, everything was uh, in my head, mm. and um, and then as you said, you realize that we are going through the same things. Mm. And uh, especially with women, I used to teach women yoga every Monday morning yeah. and uh, for the last uh, year and a half. Uh, and uh, it was very interesting how the women, they weren't really coming, well, they were coming <laughs> for the yoga, yeah. but uh, mainly what they found the real benefit was actually to share how they felt and uh, realizing that, Actually, you know, there is a woman um, next to me to the circle that she's going through menopause and actually she just shared what I was feeling, you know, and then you see this lady, they're just lifting their, um, they're like, their pr perspective and they're like, oh, okay, so it's, this is not just me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't talk about menopause. I don't talk about also, you know, losing, uh, losing a baby, maybe a miscarriage or uh, all these taboos that uh, we can talk about it. Mm. And in these places, because you feel safe and there's no judgment and we actually allow ourselves just to be and to whatever feels and honor what we feel in that moment, actually we realize that we are going through the same things and we are human beings mm -hmm. and uh, we have emotions and you know and we find a real support from that because actually society now is trying to divide us even before the coronavirus now i think even more and um, and there is so much need of feeling this connection yeah yeah, yeah definitely and I guess going on from connection, when we're looking at spiritual practice, well, I guess, and again, this is a real open question. How, how did you guys develop your own spiritual practice? And I guess what does spirituality mean to you? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a really good question. Well, my job is I'm done. So, for, for me, I've um, I've always been drawn towards the meditation side of of any practice. So even with the yoga, um, you know, when I started the classes with Kiara, probably about three or four weeks afterwards, I did a Vipassana course uh, we're together. We did a course together, and the Vipassana is for those who don't know, it's it's, it's quite intense or very intense. It's 10 days. You're completely in silence. You're segregated men and women. You end up doing about 12 to 16 hours of meditation a day, seated. Um, so it is intense. But from that, I found, I found my spiritual practice. And for me, that was trying to find my true self. Like what is, uh, in yoga, we call it the Atman or the soul, or wherever you, you know, whatever resonates with you. But it's that within inside you that never changes. And for me, that's, that's the practice that I've kind of been going down is, is using the meditation, mm. but also using the yoga, the yoga, you can use that um, through the yoga philosophy and the practices that you can do throughout the day uh, in everyday life off the yoga mat that help you to, to find your, your true self or rediscover your true self. Cause yeah. it's always there, but uh, we, we lose it underneath the piles of, um, the you know the society that piles on us and everything else but so that's, that's about like the stuff that we do off mat 
What, have you got some examples? So, uh, yeah, so in, in the yoga philosophy, it's called the, the yamas and niyamas. So these are dif- basically disciplines that we can do on, our, on ourselves. Um, so like being truthful, not stealing, and uh, the, these sort of it's general moral compasses that we have, but we, again, we kind of forget them. Uh, so it's just coming back to these, you know, thousands of years old practices to what we really know inside of us anyway. You know, when we're, when we're going to steal a car, we know it's bad, uh, but we do it anyway because there's that part of us that, you know, the part of the brain that's like, do it. Um, but when we take a step back, we go, well, you know, someone's going to be upset that they've got their car missing now, et cetera. Yeah. It's also it's about not reacting, you know, like mm. more than, you know, stealing or... Um, mm. I found that through meditation and uh, what well, first I started it, for example, for me through a physical practice, yeah. and then uh, I arrived to a more of a spiritual practice through that. I always been a very like people that know me when I was younger. I always said that either I wasn't believing in anything uh, for me when, like I didn't believe in a god or uh, any religion I wasn't mm. associating with any religion and since I started actually yoga mm. I found myself understanding that there is a little more it's not just the physical because things happening and uh, not just um, uh, not just in the physical world, but you can feel that there is energy uh, energies around you, yeah. and uh, and so you kind of drawn back inwards and uh, you observe from the inside. So the world on the outside changes as well through that, and so you're able to not react and uh, observe before reacting. And then I found this uh, an an amazing thing that changes completely your whole life and so many women or men that uh, they have difficulties in uh, you know stress related anger related or any uh, emotion it's because we never been taught to go inside ourselves and to listen first but just be in our mind and uh, and react from there react from the judgment of the mind instead of like listening from from inside of us our heart or however you want to call it then the physical like the practice uh, I found even for us changes in every different stages of our life Uh, uh, as I said before it was very physical for me and then I started discovering crystals uh, reiki and um, uh, now we're uh, we're actually working a lot with uh, with color therapy and um, uh, a type of therapy that is called aura soma. So it every every year every phase of our lives is more connecting with uh, with something that it will improve us to understand us better and uh, and who we are. So. I found that in every stage, yes, meditation is always there, yoga is always there, yeah. and then there are a lot of things around. But what we have found, because now there are a lot of therapies out there, a lot of gurus, uh, how you want to call it, that yeah. they teach you the, the truth. <laughs> Actually, the truth is in our, it's inside of us. So something that for me now is very important that, you know, you can pay any courses you can pay, like how they can teach you, uh, you know, many different techniques, but we all have this inside. Yeah. We all have this power inside of us. And that's, I think it's the very most important thing that we should know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I agree. I think, you know, the, the old saying go within or go without is kind of more apt uh, these, these days. Um, it, it, it's funny with regards to uh, that spiritual practice or the spiritual journey, I should say. Um, uh, on the last podcast, I had a, um, um, a psychiatrist who is also doing a uh, side qualification in psychotherapy. And, you know, he's a, he's a very smart guy, you know, an, a medical doctor. Um, but he, he was saying um, it, it's about the, the person 
first and foremost. And what he meant was he was talking about the shortcomings of the medical industry, about the pharmacology, that it's, it's not about that. It's about, you know, for someone with a condition, for instance, about treating that whole person. And we got into a conversation about accepting yourself. And I, I guess I wish someone had told me many years ago uh, and because th- this is what happened, you know, for myself was accepting the the shadow self, accepting the darkness, because you know you, we're taught in, you know, I went to a Catholic school, and you but you basically taught in a, a Catholic school, and it's, this isn't this isn't a, a I'm not slating Catholics by the way, but it, you're kind of taught to kind of almost repress that, um, whereas you shouldn't necessarily repress it. You shouldn't necessarily act on these dark thoughts, but it's part of you and it's about accepting and moving forward with it. And I think as soon as I did that, it was a game changer. Like, because as soon as you repress it, there's, I can only speak from a a guy's perspective, but there's feelings of guilt and shame. Um, You're like, am I the only one who kind of experiences these thoughts or these, these, these feelings? And you kind of taught that you are the only one who experiences this. And coming back to the circles, when you come into that circle, you start connecting, you start sharing, you're like, Oh, Mm -hmm. everyone here (laughs) thinks the same nonsense that I do. Okay, cool. I'm not bonkers. I'm, you know, that, that guilt and that shame suddenly start dissolving. And I think for me, the, the spiritual practice or that spiritual journey is about starting to accept you for who you are, warts and all, everything you are, mm. and then move forward. And that's the, the, the physical. I think that's for me the, the, the beauty of the Vipassana meditation. Yeah. As Gara says, you get, the, you get the observer, you become the observer. So you just, you are accepting everything exactly as it is exactly not how you want it to be not how you yeah. wish it to be you know not how uh you know but and then and then from that point it does change it just instantly changes uh spontaneously changes yeah, yeah. and i think we, we're kind of brought up in this world where everything has to be good and you know you look at uh you're looking through your instagram and your facebook and yeah. everything's all perfectly done and everything looks wonderful and you just well that's not actually what reality yeah. is you know, and people are now, no, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people have this like warped vision of what reality is or should be. Yeah. It has to be pretty imperfect. And, um, but it's, you know, that, that, that's when you come on on the inside and you start realizing your own reality, mm. it, it has you, you kind of get that power back again for you. You regain your power. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's funny that you said about shadow work because um, I just uh, did a moon circle uh, the other night on Monday, yeah. on Monday night. And we actually did, the whole circle was about shadow work because wow. it was a, also a lunar eclipse. And um, and where when there is a shadow into the moon with, the, with women, especially, but with everyone, we connected with this shadow. So this energy that is hiding inside of us in the corner of our hearts that we don't want to, we, sometimes we hide in there, you know, our little voice, our inside voice um, hides in that shadows and uh, we push it away or we repress it or we don't want to see it. And uh, that's, that's the beauty of this work is actually going there and discover that that little, uh, I'll see it as a little girl or a little boy hiding because he's scared or they're scared. And that's for me how I visualize this, um, this voice or this, uh, this inner feeling that we, we try to hide. And that's where actually the, the power that's where uh, is our power is within that you know hiding corners that we are ashamed of speaking and you know we talk a lot about sexuality we are going deep into sexuality as well because that's where we find the most shameful parts mm. of us and um, last night uh, I, I'm I'm studying a lot uh, recently about sexuality and sacred sexuality and uh, how it is important as well to make sex and uh, the whole um, act 
yeah. sacred and important. And um, my teacher yeah, last night was saying, you know, we need to think about our parents and I'm going to say something very strong now, but I'm just going to say it. Um, and, you know, that think about your parents having sex and create you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's where we need to actually make peace with that. Mm. Because it's actually the, an amazing act of love mm. where we are coming from. Yeah. And if we can make peace with that, we can make peace with all the feeling of shame of that. And usually because we we are working like with, um, especially with the tantric energy, sexual energy, healing this, this part, it kind of like whatever we feel sometimes about sexuality or anything related about this uh, theme and uh, this subject comes from our parents, come from our lineage, come from, you know, our fathers and our mothers and uh, great grandparents and so on. So it's very important to actually bring healing into this. And, uh, and from there, that's the most shadow work we can do. And then from there, we can actually rise up and bring back into the light. Yeah. Well, I mean, why, why do you think there is such a still a, a taboo around, you know, sex, sexuality and, and everything that it encompasses? <laughs> yeah. Again, you've opened up a can of worms there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a taboo. Well... I, mean, I think it's uh, the the sexualization that's happened again. I keep banging on about society. I'm for it, but against it as well. But it's the sexualization that you happened, you know. Uh, so, for example, about the periods when you're looking at um, for tampons or pads, they have to use blue liquid because people might be offended by the red liquid for the blood. And then there's a the sexualization to sell basically everything, you know, anything. If you want to sell it, you just put. Uh, a scantily dressed woman in front of the product and then it sells, you know, they say the sex sells, but this is not, this is not the true sexual nature. This is not the true sexual energy. This is like a very lower frequency energy. Um, and that the Tantra is, is kind of bringing that lower energy and then taking it up into the higher chakras, into the higher realms and the higher consciousness. And then that's where the true magic happens. That's why they're hiding and that's why it's a taboo because it's actually the most powerful thing that we can experience if mm. we really experience it correctly. But we have such a distorted image of sexuality. We are sexual beings. We live and we are born as sexual beings. And, um, and sexual, I mean, uh, you know, life force energy that in different tradition is called in Chinese is called the chi in, uh, in yoga is called prana uh, and, uh, and so on. So we are that. And, uh, unfortunately society is trying to take our power away from us. Yeah. Telling us that we need something outside of us to actually be, uh, be able to live. Yeah. But when uh, we discover that, as I was saying before as well, that all our power is inside and we can create, we can manifest, we can uh, live through this knowledge, then uh, all the, the, the pillars of society that we are living now, and especially with this coronavirus, uh, you know, is going to completely dismantle. And uh, that's why... W- they, as women, they've been taking the power from us because they, they never told us how power we can have in our wombs as creativity and manifestation. Since I started this, um, this work, we, can, uh, we have been manifesting incredible things in our lives and we're still working on it, of course. Well, it's not that we are <laughs> these uh, <laughs> gurus or anything. Actually, we're not. But, you know, it's... Um, it's a it's a journey of discovery from from the inside yeah nice nice i mean i i guess we with, with with sexuality and everything it conveys um 
I think, you know, obviously, yes, our families have a role to play, societies are wider, but also, you know, things like religion for centuries has kind of repressed, especially with, with women, that kind of, that, 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 that powerful energy. Um, you know, I guess my own thoughts are it's coming from a from fear, um, fear of what it could mean, what it could do. Um, and I think the issue from that, though, is you get, uh, especially like young, you know, young lads, for instance, they then become curious about what that is. And now we have access to everything on the planet, including porn. And that's their kind of their access to what they believe, you know, sexual energy is. Oh, mm. it, it, it's that. It's, it's what they're doing, that, that, that very physical thing that isn't based in reality, that that's what it is. And when you start, you know, talking in terms of sexuality and spirituality and, you know, this, this kind of ongoing practice, I, I think, yes, there's a lot of people that are becoming more aware and they're like, wow, okay, I never knew what that could be. But you also have the polar opposite of, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? I'm not trying to, you know, I don't want to be a part of your cult and so on. Mm-hmm. You know, they have that kind of that mentality. And I think this is where you then get the the left wing, the right wing, and um, vegans and carnivores and so on and so on. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you look at any area, there's these polarized groups. Um, Absolutely, and I think things like sexuality, spirituality, can really kind of unify and 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 join together. Um, and which kind of brings me on to why. So you kind of you mentioned kind of you know you, you're yoga teachers, you know you practice yoga, but what is it really about yoga that you know really draws you to it and and and. And some of you still practice and believe that other people should experience. I know the benefits personally, and I know what it does for me. Um, but I could bang on about it all day, and you know, people go, like, "Oh yeah, Kieran's going off on one again." But, <laughs> but why is? Yeah, I'm, re- I'm always curious to hear from other people. You know, why? So for me, my uh, I started off doing yoga. Basically, on, a, on it was just on a physical level for me because I say I had the sciatica. <laughs> I couldn't even put my hands towards my knees when I bent over. I was that you know that stiff in my body, in my legs, and everything. So for me, it was a purely physical practice. Um, but over time, and especially the way that the yoga philosophy works, and uh, like they call it the Raja Yoga, so the eight limbs of yoga, yeah. um, you you go to a spiritual practice, whether you, you want it or not, <laughs> it will eventually come around and bite you. So for me, yeah, it was just a physical practice. And then after doing the meditation and the meditation obviously is a part of the yoga philosophy. So you get to a point where you do the physical practice in order to be able to sit for lengthy periods of time to meditate without, you know, having to move or having the pain, the body in pain. And then it just becomes to a spiritual practice. And then, you know, the more books that Kiara then lent me about the chakra system and all this other stuff, my mind was just blown. I was like, I, this, it just makes sense. You know, when you start doing the physical practice and you start getting to know your body again, you understand why the kind of spiritual side of the yoga makes sense to the physical side and that they do go, um, you know, hand in hand with each other. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I agree with everything that Peter said, and um, I've been t- actually I've been thinking a lot about this because yoga get started me into my journey of discovery of myself and the power and spirituality, and it's always been there in every phases of my uh, now almost twenty years of journey. Yeah, and. Um, it's very because I think first of all is it starts with your with your body. So the body is the vessel of other bodies, as we say in in uh, in yoga. There's not just a physical body. You actually discover that other four bodies around you that um, 
and whether you like it or not, you can feel them and you you discover them and there's no coming back from there. And there, from there is just a, an incredible journey into who you are and you discover that it's not just you and, uh, you know, you're completely united with, uh, with nature and other beings. And so it's something that because it starts with the physical opens up other different levels. I don't know even uh, if I can explain myself very well in this uh, because it's it's just a feeling of, uh, I was even thinking yesterday, you know, when you move your body and you don't move it for a long, like maybe let's say for me, it was like five days. I didn't do a practice because we have a daughter, you know, life is coming uh, in the way. And, uh, and you realize how much you miss that after in, you know, like you get really addicted to that yeah. in a good way. And um, and then you want to share it with everyone. That's why I became a yoga teacher, because I was like, this is amazing. Why like, why are we not practicing everyone all yeah. of this? Yeah. Okay? yeah. So, no, 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 yeah, perfect. Yeah, both, both of you. It's, um, I, I think when, when, I, when I speak to not just you know people who practice yoga but any kind of I guess movement based professional I would say that's very you know encompassing <laughs> along that is true yeah um they'll often say something very similar you know and I could be I could be talking to a power lifter and I could be talking to like a you know a yoga professional or a, or a practitioner and they'll say something very similar and I guess when you kind of delve into it, you realize actually our whole nervous system is built on movement. Um, and there's, uh, there's often uh, an example that, that's cited by a lot of, uh, I read a lot of really random texts. Um, and it's the, the sea squirt. Have you ever heard of the sea squirt? No, I haven't. No. <laughs> I'm <you> curious now. <laughs> uh, so the, the, the sea squirt is like this, this blobby, like jelly creature that has a nervous system and it moves in the sea. And it finds it connects to a, like a rock or something, but and that's going to be its home for the rest of its life. And as soon as it connects, it eats its own brain, it eats its nervous system. And the point is, it doesn't have a use for it. It's never going to move. Okay. okay? And when they've kind of delved into the, the human anatomy and the the kind of the the brain, they realize actually, and you only have to if you've got children like yourself, you only have to know that if you've got kids. The whole nervous system, the whole of the brain is built for movement and touch. Okay? So, that, that's yeah. it, movement and touch. The more you move when you're a child, the more you get hugged, the more you're, you know, you're, you're embraced, the more intelligent, the more well-developed physically and mentally you are. And <laughs> it doesn't matter what culture you're from. It doesn't matter at all. Those are the main factors. And there's somewhere along the lines we lose that. And I think with yoga especially, and this is what I found, that there's a, it brings you, uh, it brought me a connection to things that I didn't know existed. So connection to the earth, a connection to that, that, that unsaid energy that's, that's around. It's almost like, you know, like the old school antennas on your, your TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> move it and you find a picture and you're like, ah, oh, that's what asana is. That's what it means to me. I'm moving into a position where I'm, I'm basically the antenna and then all of a sudden I'll find, I'll connect and go, oh, there it is. That's it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, that, that, that's what it is. And then after that, you know, if you went into like a, a meditation or breathing practice, you're then trying to almost fine tune that picture. Mm -hmm. that picture you've received, you're trying to embed that, focus on that and kind of really kind of digest it but that's why they call it alignment no because when you find that right alignment you you are there you you found it you you feel that muscle that you never felt okay. before on a physical level but then there is also something that is kind of like a click inside yourself that you're yeah. like wow <laughs> and you yeah. really say wow and that's why i think I keep practicing yoga is because you want to feel that sensation and the sensation of feeling alive and yeah. more I connected. I agree. Um, I, I guess just kind of to start, uh, uh, I guess closing uh, the, the conversation up, but I'm, I really, I really want 
um, I guess, listeners to kind of take some real kind of juicy bits away with them, things that they can put into practice today. So as, as you know, as professionals, what, what could be the, the top tips for someone today to either enhance their life or kind of improve their spiritual practice? What could someone go away and do, I guess, now? I think that the most important thing is uh, it doesn't matter how much you practice a day, but it makes important to practice every day. You know, whether that be just even a five minute quick stretch in the morning is better than staying extra five minutes in bed, you know, (laughs) Um, just like that regularity is, is for me what really helps. So when I did the Vipassana last February, uh, I carried on like, so be passionate. You sit two hours a day once you go and do your home practice. So I managed to keep that up for a year. Wow. Uh, and now I do a, I do an hour a day now. Um, so, but doing the, the two hours a day, it gives, it gives you that discipline. And that's when you see the results, you know, when you start doing every, even like I say, five minutes a day, you're going to notice the results at the end of a month much more. Yeah. Not just in a physical way, but you're going to notice it in the change of your mood, your change of like even what you start noticing, what you're eating and all this other stuff. It all kind of falls into one another. So a lot of people think that yoga is just a physical practice that you're jumping on the mat, but it, it ripples out, you know, it's the start of the ripple and then it ripples out into every aspect of your life. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I would suggest is just, just practice. And even if you've got to practice now, that you do maybe 20 minutes a day, try and up that to half an hour. And again, you, you know, you're going to get extra you know, hour a week you're getting in practice wise. Yeah. So. Nice consistency. Cool. And um, <clears throat> can I say for my woman prospect- perspective, yeah, what all women should do is tr- start tracking their cycle and uh, start knowing their cycle Mm -hmm. and if they don't know how to do it or what to do there is plenty of information out there and so just menstrual cycle awareness Mm -hmm. for a woman is very important first of all and uh, connection with nature nature is our greatest teacher so you know if you don't have time to practice and uh, also Peter I agree with what Peter said even just going outside in nature, bare feet into the grass, and um, is also a very, uh, it's a very important, I think, practice that we should, especially now for you know immune system uh, regeneration and and improvement. And uh, that's a bit, instead of being in a house, just go outside, walk, and connect with that, and. Uh, Yes, I would say like for somebody that is uh, completely, you know, new to all of these practices, something that what comes in my mind now, it's very simple, but very much uh, effective. Nice. Yeah, I love it. I'm a big, big fan of kind of getting feet on the earth and grounding. Yeah, Yeah, grounding is important, (laughs) especially for women. Every woman should do that with their feet. Yeah. Men and women. Men and women. Yeah, yeah everyone should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, There's like so many good health benefits now that are coming out, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah, there's a growing amount uh, of things from it. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Which is, this is the thing that makes me, uh, it does make me chuckle a little bit. Like, uh, you know, probably 10, 15 years ago, you would be called, yeah, even 50 years ago, you get called a hippie and everything yeah. else because you want to go and put your feet on the ground. But now, like, the, the evidence is coming out about the, you know, the free electrons and everything else coming through the feet. Yeah. It's amazing stuff, you know. Interestingly, the American Tour de France team 10 years ago was practicing grounding wow. after each stage, but they didn't want to announce it for that reason because they'd be called, you know, because it'd be called an alternative therapy, hippies. But yeah. they were doing it then to enhance recovery. And this is an elite professional team. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, but it's all about, you know, what anyway <laughs> yes <laughs> I'll my eye holes. Um, so where, where can people find you i guess to, to maybe learn more and if you've got any kind of circles coming up and uh, you know anything really kind of yeah, yeah let us have it <laughs> well they uh, at the moment our website is a work in progress <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, because we are also evolving and changing so much on what we do, that uh, almost uh, it's uh, it's difficult to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they for sure they can find us on Facebook. Uh, I'm uh, you can find me as uh, my work with women and women's circle uh, as Chiara Luna. Yeah. Um, um, Chiara Luna, um, yoga and therapies. Yeah, and uh, I I post all my events there, and because we just moved from from England to Italy, we have been uh, kind of readjusting our whole life. So I have a circle coming on for the next full moon, which is the thirteenth, I think, and uh, uh, but I will put everything uh, on there, and then I'm gonna start sharing more of menstrual cycle therapy which is a whole therapy uh, of um, more than just knowing your cycle but yeah. it's bringing healing into your uh, alchemic sexually sexual woman creative woman and lineage yeah. so anything that is related with our blood basically and our menstrual cycle but not just that so i'm gonna start sharing that very very soon fantastic and uh, I'm on I'm on the old Insta Instagram. So um, my name is Yogi Dot Pete. So Yogi Pete. <laughs> I've actually it's just a new page that I kind of uh, to focus my my um, yogic energies into. Yeah. Um, so from there I'll be offering you know little uh, snippets of uh, practices and um, of different pranayama, so breathing practices and the asana practices. Uh, and then from there as well I'll be offering you know uh, online Reiki courses and. Um, meditation one-to-ones and a bit of spiritual counseling if anyone needs any of that so that's uh fantastic from that. um, sounds great awesome <laughs> so thank you for joining me today guys i i you know, really appreciate your your time and anyone who gives kind of time to to service is you know always has my respect so thank you guys for that no, thank you thank you kira for inviting us on uh, enjoy the, the rest of your your day Thanks for listening to the One Zen Fitness Academy podcast. Make sure that you subscribe. Please give us a five-star review. And please, if it's not too much trouble, write review. For more information, go to www.onezenacademy.com for all your fitness, wellness, and health needs. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.